In this video, we're gonna do a video game face swap. So we're gonna take Mr. B's face and swap it onto Joel's face from The Last of Us. And as you can see, I did another one with Taylor Swift right here in The Last of Us as well, but it also works in kind of a more cartoony scenario here like this Ratchet and Clank example over here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make a selection of the face that we want to copy and paste on the other one. Okay, so we're gonna go to our lasso tool over here, the third one down. If you don't see it, right click. You might see one of these two, so lasso. Make sure your feather is at zero, and then just click and start tracing where you want your selection to be. You wanna be as kind of far out on the face as you can, like right near the edge. Be careful along things like this, like by eyebrows right here. Go around, complete your selection. Once you have the dotted lines here, then just go edit and copy or control C. Go over to the face that you're gonna paste it onto and then go edit and paste or control V. Step number two is to resize and position the face to where we want it. So to do that, we're gonna go control or command T to get the transform box here. And we're gonna drop the opacity to wherever it makes sense. I'm gonna to go to about 45. 50% so I can see through from the face to the other image underneath. Make sure this thing is checked right here, this chain, because if it's not, then you might squish or stretch or whatever your image. So make sure it's clicked. And then I'm gonna type 100 back in here to just get back to square one. So I'm gonna line up this eye first. So I'm gonna go over here and then I'm gonna go to the corner, stretch this out to the, the width that I want here. And then I'm gonna rotate it a little bit and then slide it down, okay? So to about right there, that looks pretty good. I'm not quite worried about the mouth just yet. So when you have it where you want, then click check. But you might also wanna go to edit and then transform and warp as well. I have this three by three grid up here, as you can see, you might see just default like this. I would suggest going to three by three grid so you can move like little bits at a time. So you see I'm moving the mouth here, but the eyes aren't moving. So I'm gonna kinda line this up to kind of closer to where the mouth is under there. Maybe I'll drop this a little bit here. So it allows you to individually mess with each kind of zone here. So I'm gonna make his eyes maybe expand a little bit more like that. And that looks pretty good for me. When you're done again, just click check and then bump up the opacity back to 100%. Once you have everything scaled and positioned, then you're gonna go down here and click on this box with a little circle on it to put on a mask, which is gonna put on this white little rectangle right there next to the face. Then go over to your brush tool and make sure that black is in the foreground here. So if you don't have black, click on it, slide this circle to black right here, or it might look like this. You just gotta flick this arrow so that black is in the front. As for your brush size up here, you're gonna make the hardness 100 and the size, make it about the size of an eye, somewhere around there, that's usually pretty good. And make sure your opacity is also at 100. And then all you're doing is kind of trimming around the edge here so that your face that we've cut out, like the Mr. Beast face here, is actually, it fits within the face of the one underneath, the one that you're replacing. So you're trying to just trim off the edge so you can see the face. So I can see his face there, so that's good enough. This one's difficult, that's why I picked this image because this is all like beard down here. So I'm just gonna make sure that it fits within the beard. Uh, it doesn't have to go right to the skin. If I can go get to the skin, then I will. Like right up here, I can kind of get to some of the skin and up top, I can get to some of the skin up there. When you have your face all trimmed out, it's gonna look like this on the mask. There's gonna be like this black path around it. So just right click and apply the layer mask to this layer. Then go down to your original layer, Go Control or Command J to make a copy, and then hold Control and click on the face. So you're selected on this layer, but you hold Control and click on the face to make a selection around like this. And then we're gonna hide the top layer and hide the bottom layer, then head up to Select, Modify, and Contract. So in here, if you have a really low resolution image, you're gonna contract by like two or three, and then if you have a higher resolution one, maybe four or five. So I'm gonna go kind of in the middle at three and click okay. You're gonna see it's gonna shrink your selection a little bit. If you wanna really check that, then just click back on the eyeball here of your face. And you can see that it's now a little bit smaller than the face. So I'm gonna hide that again. And then all you're gonna do while you're selected on this layer, you're just gonna go backspace to delete out the face, then bring the top face back hold control and click on the layer one over here, not on the thumbnail, over here, so that now both of these layers are selected. Then go up to edit, 
down to auto blend layers, click on that, and then make sure panorama, seamless tones and colors, and content to wear fill transparent areas are all selected. Click OK, and boom, you are pretty much done the basic part of the effect. But as you can see, especially if I go Control Command D to get rid of the selection, you can see that along these edges, it's still kind of a rough transition from one face to the next. You know, Photoshop did a good job of blending them. And as you can see, it blends both images. It kind of meets in the middle between the images. It doesn't just change the face. So what we have to do now is just mess with these kind of lines where one face meets the other. So to do that, we're going to hide the middle layers and then just have the eyeball selected on our top one, which is our new merge layer and the original layer down here. On the merge layer, we're going to put a mask on it again. So just a white box here again. We're going to make sure we're on our brush and then we have black selected in the foreground still. But for our brush size this time, we're going to keep it the same, but we're going to drop the hardness down to zero and then go over to opacity. And this time, probably around 25, 30% is probably good because what we're going to do is little bit by little bit, we are going to put black on this, which is going to punch a hole through it 25% at a time so we can see through to this layer. Okay, so I'm going to start up here so you can see that I'm going to keep kind of clicking and going over top of the line here so I can slowly kind of erase it basically. And then it's going to blend the uh, the transitions from one face to the other a little bit better. Over these the cheek area here, I tend to go maybe a little bit more in so that I can get a little bit more of the underlying layer. I think that helps with the effect. And then down here, I'm really just looking to see some of this hair kind of pop through. But you'll notice that once I get to this section over here, everything's going to become a little bit more difficult for me because if I click this eyeball, the underlying image was way darker, right? This side was pretty easy because I was, you know, as I was erasing things here, I was seeing through to similar skin tones. On this side, as I erase, it's going to be going through to black, basically. So that's okay for now, but you're going to see it's going to look pretty harsh. Like as I go over this kind of line where they meet over and over and over, it doesn't really blend very well now until I get to like really dark. So on this side, that's okay. I'm just going to keep doing that, blending them together as best as I can to kind of get it to be looking okay. So get that line pretty good. And then as I move in, I'm actually going to increase the size of my brush. I'm going to keep the hardness down and keep the opacity down. But now I can kind of have a, you know, a little bit more of a transition from the dark area to this natural skin tone. I can kind of create that myself by slowly kind of doing less as I get kind of over here. And that's probably pretty good for now. Okay, so for the rest of it, if I zoom out right now, we're going to be dealing with all the rest of this part now, because you can see that it, it changed this to help with the transition within the face. So on this same layer mask, make sure you select it on it. We're going to stay with our black brush, but now we're going to increase this a lot to make it a very big brush. And we're going to increase the opacity to 100, maybe even the hardness to about, you know, 40% somewhere in there. And you'll notice that now as I click here, I'm erasing all of that or, you know, putting the black over top of it to see it through to the underlying layer. We can go right to the ear here and over some of the face. And that'll help with some of that transition from this image to the face as well. So I'm going to go all the way over here, all the way to this side, because it did affect some of this over here. And there we go. Now, if you do go too far, like let's say you slide in like this and you erase some of that, you can always go back to white to bring some of this back. Like, for example, over here, I don't like how dark this is. So I can just flick this back to white, maybe drop the opacity even more and increase this. So I can come in here and just bring, you know, some of that back so it doesn't look as harsh on his cheek right there. All right, so now we're ready to put on our final touches, starting with the recreation of this kind of harsh shadow line right here. So to do that, just click on the top layer, the merge layer, and go down to this little half circle thing. Click on that and then select gradient. Within this editor here, change the angle to zero. I'm just going to type it in to be zero. Click within the gradient here and then change this color by clicking on it and then clicking here. Change it to black. On this side, click and click and change it to white. And then drag these boxes so they're kind of closer to each other like this to create a harsher transition line. 
click OK, and then click on the image here to kind of drag it to the spot that you want. So for me, it's just to the edge of the nose right here. I'm gonna click OK, and then change the blend mode here to soft light. And then I'm gonna actually drop this opacity a little bit. I know it's not as harsh what I'm doing here as this one, but I think that would look weird for my image. So I'm gonna just kind of dial it back a little bit. All right, so now we have to determine what things in our image we want to actually be impacted by the gradient fill. So I'm gonna click on the mask, then I'm gonna to go to my brush, make sure it's black. I'm gonna make it a fairly large brush, maybe 200 something for me. I'm gonna make the hardness around 40, 50, opacity 100, and I'm just gonna paint everything that I don't want to be impacted by that gradient. So really it's everything around here, maybe a touch into the beard, kind of scoot around here, this side of the image, I wanna take away everything of the gradient from over here to make sure that it's not impacting everything there. I might just dial back the opacity a bit to like 40, 50% and take some of it away from the forehead and the hair as well. The last thing we need to bring back in terms of the original image is probably the eye and this like rim light over here. If I hold Alt or Option on the original one, you can see that there's this kind of light that kind of rims off here and the eye kind of shines through a little bit more than right in here. So I'm gonna also click on this mask, make sure I have my brush with black in the foreground still, and I'm gonna decrease this to about 30, 35 for me, hardness right down, opacity about 50%. I'm just gonna paint in the eye with one coat. So that makes it pop a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back up here, increase the size and kind of just paint down the side here to maybe even twice for that one to kind of bring that light back through a little bit. All right, so next we're gonna deal with everything that might be the wrong color. For example, his teeth are a little bit too blue and maybe his face is a little bit too red still compared to the underlying image. So to mess with anything, all we have to do is click on the merge layer, then go to our lasso tool and trace out the area that we wanna impact. So I'm gonna start with the teeth here. I'm gonna select that. And then I'm gonna go up to select color range and then click on the teeth because that's the color that I want to change. The more you slide this up, the broader the range from that color you're gonna select. And the more you go to the left, the more exact to just that color you're gonna be selecting. So I'm gonna go up here a little bit to maybe you know, somewhere around there. That looks pretty good in here. I'm gonna click OK, and then I'm gonna head down here to this little half circle thing, click on it, and I'm gonna add a color balance so that I can mess with this cyan red one because it's a little bit too cyan blue here. So I'm gonna slide it to the right to kind of add some red or take away cyan to this. And you can see that that fixes the teeth pretty good. As far as the face goes, I'm gonna click back on the merge layer. I'm gonna make a path that's very similar to what my original path was at the very start. Then I'm gonna go up to select color range, click on red this time, cause I wanna take away some of the red. The fuzziness here looks pretty good, about the same. Click okay. This time I'm gonna go to the little half circle thing though, and I'm gonna put hue saturation because I wanna take away some saturation. So I'm just gonna slide this just to the left, just a little bit. Okay, so just know that if you do that, that still might impact the teeth. So on this one, what I would suggest is also going to your brush here, making sure it's black, shrinking this down so that it's you know, the size of the teeth. Uh, hardness around 50, that's good. Opacity at 100. And just paint in here just to make sure that you're not taking away, you know, any, uh, you know, saturation or red or whatever from the teeth. Now, if you need to change any hair color, like my mustache here, then all you do is make the same kind of selection. So I'm just gonna fire through this like that. But instead of select and color range, we're gonna go right here to select and mask. This thing's gonna open up at the top. Yours might look like this. You might have a different view like onion skin. I like to pick overlay and I like to have the opacity somewhere around the middle so I can see both my selection and the underlying layer. We're gonna use this brush with the fire thing around it. And if you notice, all my settings are kind of low because I have a small area. And all I'm gonna do is paint in here to allow Photoshop to help me make the selection of the hair. So I'm gonna paint kind of around all the spots that I think need selecting, okay, so something like that. But if you notice, I have these extra little patches. So I'm gonna go to the brush with the circle, go to the minus, and I'm just gonna get rid of anything that I know 
that I don't want to be affected by the color change. So everything kind of down here, maybe into the face right there, and then up in the nose here. Okay, so once you have your selection the way that you want, then just go to the bottom here, make sure it says output to selection, click OK, and then head back down to the little half circle thing, click on it, and choose hue saturation again. This time, for me, all I need to do is desaturate a bit because I need it to be more like gray hair, like black and white, so I just need to desaturate. But let me quickly show you how to change color as well by using her hair instead. So if I just quickly make this selection, I'm not even gonna take any time at all here, just fire through and make a general selection, go up to select and mask, use the fire brush here. I'm gonna try and get a decent selection of this hair fire through, you can see Photoshop does a good job of selecting. I didn't even adjust any of my settings up here, just super quick like that. Okay, so when you have your selection good again, make sure it's selection, output to, click OK, go in here, add hue saturation, and you can see that this is, you know, a much better example of how you can change, you know, hair color. All right, so the final, final thing that we're going to do is add some kind of grunge to this image to kind of make the face here, like the Mr. Beast face, match more of the grungeness of the video game stuff. So I'm gonna click on the very top layer, hold shift, click on your bottom layer, then go command or control J to duplicate them, then command or control E to merge them into one layer, right click on it, convert it to a smart object, head up to filter and add camera raw filter. In here, we're gonna be able to mess with a few other things as well, like color, but I'm gonna skip that and contrast, so I'm gonna add a little bit of exposure, add some contrast, maybe pop my highlights a little bit, drop my shadows, pop my whites just a touch, and drop my blacks. Then for the grunginess part, I'm gonna do that down here, so I'm gonna add quite a bit of texture to it, maybe about 35 or so, add a little bit of clarity, a little bit of dehaze, and maybe just drop vibrance just a touch. Okay, so when you're good, click OK, and then all we have to do is take that effect away from the background, because if I click this away, it also did everything we did to the face there, it was doing it to the background. So once again, we have to click on our mask for that layer. We're gonna make sure we have a black brush and make sure it's pretty big, drop the hardness, yeah, to 40, 50, and opacity at 100, maybe even a bigger brush, and then just paint away everything in the background here that you don't want to be affected by all the kind of harshness that we just added with camera raw filter to you know grungeify the image so just paint over everything you don't want to be affected and there you go that's how you create a video game face swap in photoshop if you got something out of this video make sure to drop a like and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing and i'll catch you next time